Hello. Like most in modular, I love nothing more than spending my money on quote-unquote cool, exciting modules. But there is a really important lesson that I think we need to bear in mind, which is the importance of boring modules. Boring, boring modules like utilities. Exciting things are VCOs and filters, BBDs, distortion modules, and all kinds of sexy things, of which there are loads in Eurorack. But spare a moment for utilities, because these are the things which can truly unlock the functionality of your modular. Unless you have an appropriate complement of utilities, you'll find yourself stumped trying to do things that you suddenly realise you can't do. And more's the point, you'll find yourself wanting to do things, reaching for your wallet, and then realising that actually, if you have a good set of utilities in your system, the latent functionality can exist within your modular to wire up and create functionality that you didn't realise you were able to do before. With that in mind, there are a bunch of compressors already in your rack, but with a certain set of utilities in our system, we can actually create a compressor to varying degrees, but we can create a workable compressor, assuming we have certain things. So let's make a compressor. In order to do this, um, we're going to need something to compress. So first, we're going to need a drum beat. This is um, the Tip Top Audio Trigger Riot, and I have the Tip Top Audio 808 modules, um, and we have a beat going on. So let's hear what it sounds like. Cool. Very cool. However, let's compress it and see if we can make it sound a little bit more smacky and interesting. So in order to create a compressor, first, we're going to need to plug the output of the drums into a mixer. So I'm going to take what I just had and I'm going to stick it into input one on a mixer and I'm going to mult it. And you can do this with multiples. I'm using tip top audio stack cables, which are kind of like multiples in and of themselves, sending it somewhere else. And where I'm going to send it is into the asymmetric input of a dope for A119 external input module. This is a really useful module. It allows you to put um, things which are not at modular level into the module, uh, modular, which is cool because modular level is very hot, as in it's a lot louder than um, signals, traditional sort of line level signals from other synths and stuff you may already have. So into here goes our drum beat. So it's both going to the mixer's input and to this module. And you can see that there's activity here. So it's overloading. But we have a bunch of different outputs. We have the audio output of the module here. And then we have an envelope followed output, which is really interesting. So it's basically tracking the um, pattern of the drum loop itself. And it's creating a kind of slightly smoothed version of it. What we're more interested here, though, is in the gate output. So what happens is that the A119 has what's basically called a comparator. So a comparator is a module which has the ability to listen to an incoming signal and basically output a gate if it hits a certain threshold. Um, so what's happening here is that there's a threshold control. And if I stick it all the way to the bottom, it stays lit. And if I move this control, it will start to not be on all the time, ending up almost never on, where only the loudest signal triggers the threshold. So something that is actually reacting to the volume of what's coming in, spitting out a gate, is going to be really useful. So let us manipulate that gate. So I'm going to use the gate output, and I'm going to put it into what's called a slew limiter. So a slew limiter is basically a module which will allow us to control the rising and falling in a well spec slew module of a input signal. So what's happening here, I'm using channel four of the Make Noise Math, uh, which is, this is an awesome module and it can be used for so many things and it demonstrates its usefulness here. It's going into the channel four of the math. You can see that this is active just in response to here. So they're basically trailing each other. But what's cool is because this is a slew limiter, I can use this to adjust the start point and I can slow up the start and I can extend the ends. So whereas before it was hard on and off, it becomes smoothly on and off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to invert that signal. So I'm going to take the output of this channel and I'm going to stick it back into the module into this attenuating input, which is an input that allows us to apply even more positive amounts of the signal or to twist it the other way and actually create a negative inverted 
form of this signal. Because what I want to do is when this drum sound comes in loud, I want to crush it down soft. Now crush it down low, I should say. So we've now got an inverted version of this smoothed out um, signal, gate, which is being derived by the drums. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take yet another copy of the drums, um, which is here. And I'm going to stick it into a VCA. So a VCA is a voltage controlled amplifier. It's an amplifier, a thing that makes things louder and can make things softer under voltage control. And I'm going to use that signal that we've made here out of the inverted section here. And I'm going to use that to control the VCA. So literally this signal is now going to be riding the volume of the drums itself. Let's stick it into our output. As I smooth this out, we start to hear the drums coming in. As I adjust these controls, it's clamping down very hard at the moment. It's basically being triggered when the bass drum kicks in. So it's having a huge clamped effect when the bass drum kicks in, and not a great deal at other times. So what I'm going to do, in order to just slightly um, make this more manageable, is I'm going to use a filter but I'm not going to use a filter in the sense we're actually going to hear. I'm going to use it just to remove portions of the um, drum signal, which are kind of having this um, extreme clamping effect. So I have the Corgasmatron here, and I'm going to use this channel just as a high pass filter. Um, so let us um, see if we can refine this. Okay. Let's see what happens if instead of using this gate output, we use the nice envelope followed output as our um, kind of smooth originated source. This is interesting because the envelope follower is giving us a lot more information than just the threshold control. It is kind of riding the drums. So if we smooth that out, Adjusting the drums. Okay, this is actually sounding totally sweet. So it is very smacky though. Let us just slightly modify it. So I'm going to take that output. So what we're doing is we've got this very first signal that we created, the raw basic drums with no compression applied. And then we've got our version that has compression applied going into a mixer. Okay, so we need to apply some kind of makeup gain to this. Uh, in order to do that, I'm actually going to use the other channel of the maths. And then I'm going to use where's that. Where's that output for? So we've created a much smackier kind of powerfully compressed version of our drums. The lesson here is the idea that if you have a few simple modules, together they allow us to create something really cool, which is a compressor, um, which has a use. But what's interesting is now that we've created that signal, that kind of compressed envelope followed slewed version, perhaps there's other interesting things that we can use that control signal to do as well. Let's do something slightly weird with our control signal. Namely, let's take the signal that I originally had in here, which was my dry uncompressed drums, and stick it into this a 1881 BBD module, um, which is a delay module, um, but designed for very short times, as in it's more of a kind of flanger and um, chorus module than what you would think is a traditional long, slow analog echo. Um, and I'm going to use our awesome, cool um, envelope followed um, signal, the inverted one out of here using a stack cable. I'm going to use a copy of it and put it into the BBD. So we're going to be doing weird modulation using the kind of compressors, uh, this kind of compressed signal um, not just as a compressor, but also as a kind of creative effect um, 
for our BBD copy, which is going to be blended in with it. Okay, so here's our compressed signal. And let's blend in the BBD signal and get it going. Adjusting the filter is kind of affecting the whole path. <laughs> so cool. BBDs are insane. <laughs> Ace. So just think, latent possibility may lie in your modular. Consider things like comparators, slew limiters, VCAs, inverters and mixes as useful tools to bring added functionality to your cool stuff like your filters and BBDs and whatnot. What can you make? You don't necessarily have to buy something just to do it. You might already have the ability in your system right now. Thanks.